Uh, we're going to be speaking today about the future of mobility, the future of transportation. Thank you for choosing Nevomo and enjoy your levitating ride. So let's now try to imagine how we can tackle this and imagine a, an upgrade for rail which would allow us to double the capacity, halve the travel times and that could happen at a cost no higher than half uh, of the cost of, of building alternatives. And that could be available very, very soon. Uh, we are not reinventing the wheel. We are upgrading, supplementing an existing system that has proven for centuries to be one of the most efficient modes of transportation. We can indirectly cut really a lot of CO2 emissions using this technology. If we manage to shift uh, traffic from roads and airports to railways, because railways become much more attractive, Finally, after more than three years of really hard work of our engineering team, we can announce today that we've made it. For the first time in history, we've managed to levitate a railway vehicle on an existing railway line. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Nivoma, for having me here. I'm really thrilled about the innovation presentation that I saw uh, just now. I think uh, innovation in Europe, this is just what Europe needs. Uh, we need innovation uh, to combat the brain drain and to uh, see to it that a sector, especially the rail sector, is attractive for young, intelligent people. If you uh, bring the Europeans together, with high-speed rail connections, uh, you will create a lot uh, of a lot more economic growth. And when I see this new innovation here, I'm going, uh, I'm getting more and more excited. I was in Warsaw and I've met the Novomo guys earlier, uh, thanks to Ben, and it was a real uh, nice uh, visit. But now I see this, and I'm well. I'm I want to address this question. I would like to uh, that, uh, that you can point out which are the best tracks that we can start with this project in Europe. I think it's good that we start somewhere in Europe because this is such a beautiful technique. And as you say, it's cheaper than high-speed rail and it is environmentally friendly in a sense that you don't have to uh, build new railway lines. You can put it on existing lines. I really believe in the impact high-speed rail and ultra-high-speed rail can have in changing the way in which we um, perceive uh, mobility. So I would personally start with introducing the railway booster, do it on sh short stretches and make sure that people see that this technology offers higher capacity and higher flexibility uh, than the conventional rail would do, and this can happen in the course of the century. In railways, it's an open shared system with many actors uh, having different roles, different responsibilities, but also different interests. So um, uh, there is a need to really engage all those stakeholders together. Indeed, uh, CPK is the biggest effort in European Union, in Poland, in, in the region to deliver a comprehensive intermodal system of, or system of transportation. It emerged in 2017 
from the concept and the results will be delivered in 2028, the first results. I'm mentioning this because I believe that we have the same DNA of innovators as Nevomo. Because to start with a, such a huge project uh, placed in the stable and routine industry sector as a, as a railways, uh, you have to be a dreamer. You have to have a vision to deliver something special. And uh, this is very much about CPK. And we are very closely cooperating with Nevomo to see when the idea, when the technology will be ready. Because this is about the technology. We have seen this promising, promising uh, advantages. Uh, Nevomo could be, could be a reliable partner for the investor, for investors in Europe. For railways, but we want to enable railways to do better. So we bring capacity, we bring flexibility and such by not competing with existing incumbents, but enabling them. So Nevomo will not plan to operate railway networks. We do not plan to build own tracks, own trains, operate them, neither the infrastructure nor the trains. So I think it's more like a chance for railways to step up and basically do better with the existing network and the huge assets. So I think if railways are not inventing themselves to some new standards, somebody else will do it. And the new technology is already on the horizon. It's not only about innovation in a technological sense. I think it's very important, maybe even more important, that we start thinking about politics and innovation. And that this politics is far more an enabler of new tendencies, new developments and innovation than it was uh, before. So as it is an upgrade to railways, we, we do not have to shut down it for, for weeks or um, a months. So we could basically like implement and deploy like meter by meter by meter just overnight to grow into the railway network. So imagine, for example, we could start at one incline where you have a capacity problem and a heavy freight train could not run with uh, cruise speed uphill. You have to lower the loading limits. So imagine it would just deploy on that 12 kilometer um, um, some macro booster technology, then it could already bring 10, 20, maybe 30% on additional capacity in the overall network. So we do not have to deploy it basically everywhere. And I think this is the beauty of the system itself, that punctual and particular installations would already help to overcome some obstacles. We are running, for example, a use case study with SNCF in Paris, in chatelet les -Alles, and there would be like a punctual installation just in the sand tunnels. And I think implementing such kind of technology on some hundred meters in the sand tunnels could be done in a week, maybe, over some night shifts. So like a week later, you could add additional capacity. The staged approach, the selection of a pilot lines is really the main starting point to uh, see where it would be profitable, where it would be feasible, and where it will bring uh, additional capacity. It could be a situation in which the, the, the brand new technology could be applied easily and without uh, disturbance in, 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 the, in the traffic. The, the Poland is a very dynamic country and uh, we are introducing several uh, solutions to improve the quality of the railway service. This of course applies to the uh, existing infrastructure manager but the numbers Growing uh, of growing passengers in uh, in, the, in the railways which simply proves that uh, this is still a great space to 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 have the the, the, the improvement, and we are going forward. I mean, because actually the maglev technology offers exactly what many people want at the moment a sustainable technology that could be a real alternative to air travel. Therefore, I'm very pleased that there are currently a number of companies in Europe that have taken up the subject of ultra-high-speed mobility. They want to promote innovative solutions like the Mugrail. We need clear signals from Brussels and from member states. We need to bring together all European players, combine railways, maglev and hyperloop knowledge and work 
on a European strategy for ultra-high-speed mobility. I think cooperation is need needed and the railways should recognize the added value of maglev technology. Well, the EIC provides blended funding, so they have already received a grant Normally a grant of the SC is two and a half million, so that helps you basically deeper in the value of debt. And if you succeed, then you get, let's say, funding. So let's say equity or convertible loans, and that helps you through the value of debt. But then you have to grow. So yes, it helps you to survive longer and to test the technology, but the next challenge is to, go, to come with follow-up funding. And there are several options for that. One is to be very political. The Commission has made a proposal to the Member States to come up with a STEP plan, which is 2.8 billion euros, and the objective is to give follow-up funding for the current beneficiaries. So that's a, now a proposal that is with the Member States to decide on, and if that comes through, then basically it enables the EIC to, to f offer follow-up investment mainly in the most, let's say, strategic areas. So that's one option. The second option is that when uh, Nevomo is going in, goes in the hands of the fun part, it goes to the EIB, and the EIB is, in this technology, very well trained in providing f further funding, so for funding for infrastructure. So the infrastructure side should come from the clients, and they can use funding that is available through the EIB. And the third one, I think that's an important uh, message also for my, all my colleagues at the Commission, is that we have to look much better at synergies between instruments. I mean, the Commission has been supportive of Hyperloop as a technology with potential, uh, particularly the potential, we think, to uh, take us a long way in replacing aviation over short to medium distances with low, uh, very low energy requirements. Whereas what Novomo can do, what Magrail can do, is actually do something which leverages some of the benefits of the levitation technology over much shorter distances. Uh, and that's clearly about sort of going back to look at what was done in maglev to see what new things can be brought in, how that's now relevant to the transport mix of the future. So it's, it's essentially trying to disinter it and see where we can pitch maglev alongside conventional rail, alongside Hyperloop, etc. I think where we go next, and I mean that's not just for maglev, but that's for Hyperloop as well, really depends on seeing where something is developing that actually from a European strategic perspective makes sense. I mean, if with Maglev or Hyperloop, we really have the perspective to offer something which is going to help us with very high speed over long distances and thus with decarbonisation. Zia could uh, be there as uh, uh, Maglev technology could be there as a priority project because it's you could consider that it's net zero <coughs> technology. Yes, Horizon Horizon has a lot of money and I hope that they will invest it in real things like this one. First of all, uh, if it comes to the TNT, uh, I think we had a good initiative report in the Parliament where first it was mentioned uh, that we need this kind of innovative solutions like Marvel, Maglev, like Hyperloop. And uh, in Parliament there was a broad majority from all political parties uh, to have this in. And this is a big uh, signal from the Parliament which is important. And of course we can do exactly the same here with Magrail even better because this system offers much more flexibility, shorter braking distances and so on. So this is something we are looking at with, with users. Absolutely fully digital technology, because for the first time ever we can control from the level of infrastructure real time the position of every train, of every wagon. And we can really manage it much more efficiently and this will also help to um, get to higher average commercial speed.